Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continue from the Shamail of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala chapter number uh, 17, 18, 19, 20. We'll be covering inshallah today. Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala, he goes on to talk about the imamah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the izar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the walking of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the covering of the head of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what these chapters consist of. Now all of these things perhaps, um, some in more detail than others, we have already discussed in the previous chapters. So this will be perhaps a little bit of a recap with a little bit of new information. Let me just share the screen and then we'll get started. So these several chapters, chapter 17, 18, 19, 20, which we'll be going over. There's only five narrations in this particular chapter. Uh, uh, the, the plural of imama is amaim or ammam. Uh, bo both uh, both uh, plurals come. And this referring to the cloth which is wrapped around an individual's head. Which is wrapped around an individual's head. This is a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, many of the companions also followed the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu imitating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as they would in every action that they possibly could. Rather, uh, the next chapter, chapter 18, uh, will get to the narration of uh, the izar of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to one of the companions, is there not an example in me for you? Am I not an example for you? Am I not an example for you? Uh, in response to in response to him saying that uh, why can I not have my my izar on the floor or dragging on the floor? And when he looks at the Prophet sallallahu as a Prophet is saying this, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's izar was reaching uh, half shin so to say, so between uh, 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 the knees and the ankle, uh, halfway between that. So half shin, if you want to call it. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is undoubtedly an example, uh, is undoubtedly an example for us and was for them. Uh, Imam uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah and uh, uh, Imam Aini uh, both being commentators in Sahih Bukhari. They both mention different things, but they conclude the fact, proving the fact that this is Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, Imam Aini, rahimahullah, he goes on to say that someone asked Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, is this a Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And he responds by absolutely, this is a Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, however, we hear narrations uh, from people um, and perhaps even come across such uh, in various books and compilations that an individual who wears an imama, a turban, and then he prays salah, he prays two units of prayer. Um, it is more virtuous than in, in comparison to an individual who does it without a turban um, and the likes such up. Rather, one of them goes on to, one of, the, one of those particular narrations go on to say that uh, it's equivalent to, if I'm not mistaken, 60, 60 units of prayer outside of that. These narrations, they're, 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 they're fabricated. There's, there's, no base, there's no basis to them. Uh, extremely weak, some are even fabricated in essence. But nonetheless, this is one of the actions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, one of the sunnahs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the things that the companions used to do as well. The first narration being from Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he goes on to say, دخل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مكة يوم الفتح وعليه عمامة سوداء. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conquered Mecca and he was wearing a black turban. Obviously, the Prophet, as, as we talked about before actually, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved the color white. إِنَّ خَيْرَ ثِيَابِكُمْ 
the best of your clothes are those which are white, uh, which are white. Uh, but from this, we understand the permissibility of wearing different colors, um, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did as well. Um, you know, one, one small point being such that uh, black is, is, is a, uh, um, black garments or black hair, um, it's a sign of, um, black hair in general is, is a sign of, of, of being young, of being energetic, being powerful. One of the things that the, that, that, uh, the, the companions in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do we went over the the fact uh, the the narrations in which the Prophet Sallallahu forbid it from dyeing hair black, correct? Um, in the chapter of uh, uh, the 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 Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dyeing his hair, or did he dye his hair? Or it was under the chapter of the white hair of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and how Abu Bakr radiAllahu Anhu used to dye his hair, uh, and what colors he used to use, etc. But for this particular thing for war or for expedition uh, to to um, to uh, what word am I looking for to make the enemy fearful of you to make the enemy fearful of you um, it is permissible uh, to uh, uh, at, at, at that particular moment it was permissible to dye your hair or Perhaps that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wore the color black even. But nonetheless, this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wore when he was conquering, when he conquered Mecca. Uh, Amr bin Hurayth, he says, uh, he narrates from his father, رَأَيْتُ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ يَخْطُبُ عَلَى الْمِنْبَرِ وَعَلَيْهِ عِمَامَةٌ سَوْدَى He says that I saw, uh, uh, his father says, that I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam giving khutbah on the minbar, and he had a black imama on. Uh, next hadith being similar on Ja'far ibn Amr ibn Hurayth and Abihi on Abihi and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa khatab al nas wa alayhi imamatun sawda. The next hadith being in how the Prophet sallallahu used to wear his imam. And I'll try explaining this as, bad, as best as I possibly can. Uh, it's hard without showing it, but we can attempt inshallah. When you see people tying their turbans, it's tied in different ways. One way being that it doesn't have cloth sticking out of it. We'll call it a tail because it, so to say, looks like a tail. It doesn't have a tail sticking out of it. Um, then you have imamas, then you have turbans, which people tie, which have a tail sticking out from the back. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he goes on to say, and this was his action and this was the action of many of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, as we see from this narration, narration number four. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a tail sticking out from the back and it would be in between his two shoulders. He had a tail sticking out from the back and it would be in between the two shoulders. إِذَا عَتَمَّ سَدَلَ عِمَامَتَهُ بَيْنَ كَتِفَيْهِ When he used to tie the imamah, the imama would be the tail of the imama would fall between the two shoulders of the Prophet. ﷺ. Ibn Abbas عنهما, he goes on to say that the Prophet ﷺ was once delivering a sermon and he was wearing a, a, a oily strip of cloth or oily turban. Uh, several chapters ago, we went over how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or how it was described, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam oiled his hair and, and how much oil he used to put, to such an extent that the cloth that he was wearing on his head, or if cloth touched his head, it would absorb the oil. That's how much oil the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would put on his hair. Uh, so Ibn Abbas Radiallahu Anhumah, he says something similar. Uh, next, uh, next chapter being in regards to the izar of the Prophet ﷺ. Now izar means, so there are two, 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 two garments, one being the top, one being the bottom. Bottom is called izar. Ma uh, yasturu asfal al That which covers the bottom half of an individual. That which covers the bottom half of an individual. 
One is that covers al uh, badan and one is asfal al badan. That covers the top of the button, the badan, uh, the body, and that which covers the bottom half of the body. The bottom half of the body is referred to as izal. Now, as far as it goes, wearing uh, um, cloth that had two legs, so to say, like the sh like pants or, or pajamas or or, or or you know any type of garment which had two legs cut out so to say two legs cut out uh, there's nothing at, there's nothing that that, that that that's attributed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wearing something like this wearing something like this and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wear izal <coughs> excuse me not only that <coughs> Not only that, but the izal of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to reach uh, uh, um, halfway down his leg, so uh, a mid mid shin, so to say, uh, would be the izal of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbidden us from uh, um, forbidden the companions from allowing the the bottom uh, garment to flow past the ankles and the reasoning being this is my personal opinion from what i uh, what we understand from the from the narrations Abu Bakr anhu, he was a skinny individual his izar used to fall down constantly meaning below his ankles and uh, he told the prophet وسلم, that you know am i am i included in this the reason the prophet وسلم, said that this is a form of kibar a form of pride Obviously, nowadays, that is not the case. That is absolutely not the case, and at least in our society in America. Uh, that is absolutely not the case. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna You are not from amongst those who do it out of kibbutz, out of, out of pride, out of, uh, out of thinking that you're better than others. Nowadays, that is not the case. It is just something which is normal. It is just something which is, which is normal. No one does it with that Tension. And that's not even, that's not nowhere near an individual's intention. That's nowhere near an individual's intention. Rather, it's the exact opposite. Uh, rather, uh, for, for men, the style is now what, to, to have the pants above the ankles, uh, you know, you know uh, way above the ankle in order to show off the shoe, in order to show off the shoe. But uh, uh, obviously, that shouldn't be done out of pride either. Um, but nowadays, that is not the case. And this is my personal opinion, that if individual does not have kibbit, and in our context, there's no pride involved in this. There's nothing wrong for, uh, in allowing the pants to flow underneath the ankles. However, the Prophet did say, one of the reasons that he did say, which we'll get into this narration, uh, um, that uh, um, it, it protects an individual from uh, from from impurities. Um, when the cloth is dragging on the floor, um, you know anything can touch it. Obviously, in our context, no one has their cloth dragging, and no one has their pants legs dragging on the floor. You don't have your pants leg dragging on the floor, but nonetheless. Uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she showed the companions a patched sheet and a thick coarse izar. Kisa'an mulabbadan wa izaran ghalidan. Faqalat qubida ruhu rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi hadhain. The Prophet sallallahu was wearing these two when he passed away. A thick coarse izar and a patched sheet for the top. That was addressing of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Ubaid al Khalid radiallahu anhu he says, Once I was going to Medina, Ida insan al Khalfi yaqul irfa' izarak, fainahu atqa wa abqa. That raise your izar. Why? This is something which is more, uh, uh, shows that you, you have, you have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and it lasts you longer. Meaning it is cleaner and it is not dragging on the floor. So I turned around, I saw it was the Prophet. And he goes on to say, This is just a simple izar that I'm wearing. 
a simple cloth that I'm wearing? Is there, is there, is there you know, his, his intention being, is there pride with this? Is there pride involved even with this? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responds by saying, is there not an example for you and me? Meaning, is there no benefit in following me? And he says that I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his izar reached half of his ship. Uthman radiallahu anhu wore his izar till the middle of his shin and he said, this is how my master, this is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hakadha kanat izaratu sahibi, yani nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is how my companions, this is how my, uh, this is how my prophets, this is, this is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's izar also reached. Hudhaifa bin Yaman radiallahu anhu, he goes on to say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, caught the shin of his leg, of, Abu Mus, of Hudhaifa bin Yaman's leg, or he, he touched his own leg. And he said, this is where the izar should reach. And if not, then a little, little further down. And if not, then it has no right on the, ang and the ankle. It has no right on the ankle. And again, the reasoning being why, because it is a sense of, it, it, it was something which the prideful, with the boastful, which the rich people of society used to do. Um, the walking of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we've already spoken about this in previous chapters, but nonetheless, we'll go over these narrations again, bi-idhnillahi uh, ta'ala. Uh, what we have gone over already is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would walk in such a way as if he's descending from a high place. Uh, he would walk in a humble manner, without pride. Uh, uh, without pride, uh, the Prophet used to walk. Rather, it was such that he would not walk extremely slow. It would be such that the people who were walking with him, I, if they were walking a normal play, pace, they would find it hard to walk and keep up with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he goes on to say, uh, لا رأيت شيئا أحسن من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كأن الشمس تجري في وجهه. I never saw anyone more handsome as Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. It was as if the brightness of the sun had shone from his face. وما رأيت أحد أسرع في مشيته من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كأنما الأرض تطوى له إن لنجهد أنفسنا وإنه لغير مكترث. Uh, he says that I did not see anyone walk faster than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was as if the earth was folded for him, meaning able to uh, uh, cover long distances faster than, 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 than what others could. Uh, and he goes on to say, um, you know, it was such that he would be... Um, that, that we found it difficult to keep pace when we walked with him and he walked at his normal pace. We would be struggling to keep up with him. He was not going fast. He was not going fast. This was his normal pace. Ali radiallahu anhu used to say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he walked, he lifted his leg with vigor, meaning with energy. He wasn't dragging his feet. He was not dragging his feet on the ground. Uh, when he walked because of the speed and force of his legs, it seemed as if he was descending. You know, when you're coming, when, when you're descending from a hill or you're going down the stairs, your body leans forward. You, it leans forward. It doesn't lean back. It leans forward. That's how the Prophet Sallallahu used to walk. Uh, Ali ibn Nabi Talib radiallahu anhu, this previous hadith was found in, the, in, in uh, chapters before. But the same thing being mentioned, that the, how the Prophet ﷺ used to walk as if he is descending from a place. Um, the 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 babu majafi taqnuri Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This, in essence, means covering of the head, covering of the head. Um, how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to cover his head. The Prophet often used to cover his head. He often used to, and, and this is with a cloth, nothing else, with a cloth or with a turban, or even the cloth which is underneath a turban, so to say. 
uh, Anas al Malik radiallahu anhu says that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam often wore a cloth on his head. This cloth because because uh, uh, of how much it absorbed the oil, it looked as if it, it itself had been oiled, as if it itself had been oiled. This is a brief description of these particular chapters in regards to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the ability to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's footsteps in every manner of life. And as, as far as the commands goes, as far as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed his salah, as far as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did his actions, as even as far as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's character was, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to inculcate that within our lives as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.